up with, hey, let's start something here? Well, uh, we was always friends growing up together, and we was uh, we was close. And uh, I got back and uh, got a job uh, at Chrysler Corporation, and uh, a lot of the the guys. Uh, I used to take the written test for them for the uh, auto factory. Uh, it was about a 15 minute test. And uh, Eddie didn't go to school uh, uh, much. Matter of fact, he used to skip school a lot. And uh, I used to take tests for them at Chrysler. Anyway, I got a job at Chrysler. And uh, I remember going by Eddie's home and telling him that I had uh, 27 pairs of slacks, uh, this and that. And he might not even been working at the time. You know, him and his brother. They was more or less. Uh, this was before the nerve hustling. Right. Uh, gambling on the street, uh, running street cap crap game. He and his brother used to do that. And uh, later, I think uh, Eddie did work briefly in a plant because I remember he got his finger cut off. It was either at Ford's or I'm not sure which plant. Uh, and uh, later, he was driving a cab. You know. So you get a call. Tell us how, you know, the conversation of, hey, I got this going on and I want you to come in. Well, what happened, uh, I was visiting Eddie once and he had a guy over his house um, that uh, was a heroin dealer. He had a, a elder rider, a guy named Young Blood, uh, parked in front of his house. This was in what year, brother? Uh, in the 60s, around maybe 68 or 69. So, right, right. Um, and uh, I watched this guy, uh, and he was uh, he, sn he was snorting some heroin, and I was looking at him hard. And Eddie hunched me and said, "Don't look at the man like you crazy." And uh, but that was the first that I saw. This guy had a, a grocery store. Drove an elder rider, was real sharp. He was he was dealing drugs. And shortly after that, uh, Eddie and his brother, because I was over there helping them cap up uh, dollar caps. They used to call them penny caps. So you could uh, actually buy one dollar worth of heroin. Right, in uh, gelatin caps. Uh, you buy the caps out the store empty. The, the caps were something like for either insulin or certain kind of medication that you take yourself. And uh, you, you buy them and you cap up the heroin. And it was called penny caps. They sold for a dollar, you know. Wow. So how did, um, Okay, uh, for me, uh, uh, capping up when Eddie and his brother had got into business with these uh, dollar caps. Uh, they was getting a little bigger. They opened a place on uh, Hancock Street. And uh, by me working, having a job, I used to uh, go by, spend an hour or so there before I went to work. And in order to buy record albums, little deals that come through there, small TVs, electronic items. And uh, I happened to be there once, uh, I think. Yeah, I just go by, spend an hour before I go to work uh, buying electronics. Right, stealing out of stores, bringing albums, record albums, uh, small TV, stuff like that. You buy it and resell it? No, I buy it and keep it. I only buy stuff that I, I wanted to keep. And I'd go by there before I go to work. So at this time, I think uh, Courtney was working with them. And uh, we knew everyone. I come by there, stay an hour, and then go on to work. At uh, one time, a guy had pawned a pistol, and uh, he uh, said he'd come to get it out. And by me being trusted, I knew where the pistol was kept in the other room. Uh, and the guy kept getting his gun and uh, ejecting the bullets out, but he would leave one bullet in the chamber. And I'm steady seeing this. He do this two or three times. So I ease in the other room and get the pistol. And uh, I said, you said you come to get your gun. Where's the money? Get up against the wall. And 
The guy pulled out a bill with a man riding a horse, a $10,000 bill. Just at that time, uh, Eddie and his brother was coming and uh, you know, they bought the gun from the guy. That's what gave me entree into the organization since I lived a block down the street. They wanted somebody that could come and pick up the money. And uh, Courtney was already working with them. And uh, this was uh, somewhere 68, 69. Yeah. They had, uh, had, 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 the business had built a little bit since then because they were selling uh, uh, penny caps, which is dollar caps, out the back door. And they were selling half quarters and eighths out the front. And an operation that size needs different people. One, you can't, one person can't estimate, uh, well, uh, it's only been an hour, uh, they haven't sold that much, or they might have could have sold a lot in an hour. So you needed two, three, four, five people to be going through at different times picking up the money. And that's how it, it started building uh, with the front five. Which so you're going and picking up, you're basically, all you got to do is at a certain time every day. Yeah, pick up uh, money, go through, and do that. Just then, describe the, the, so you got this apartment building, and it's dope getting sold out the back, it's people going upstairs to get weight. I mean, like, how, did, how crazy, like, what was the scene like? Uh, the, the buildings was kind of close together, and the building Eddie bought was near a college fraternity. It was on one side was a college fraternity. So uh, it, it, people wasn't running like a line or something like that. Uh, in the back you had gangways on each side and, uh, and plus people did more walking then. You know, if it wasn't a, a large crowd, it didn't look any way out of the way unusual. So you had people that go to the back. This was a shooting gallery where people uh, in, inject drugs into them. All right, in the front, we developed a system where uh, on my shift, I would open the door, customer, let the customer in, customer would give me the money. I would go up the steps, put the money through a chute in the door. They had made a pipe in the ceiling that uh, they would drop the dope down right in front of the door customer would pick it up. I took their money, but I never hand them any product. Then I would open the door and let them out. And uh, that's the way the operation worked. Did you, were you ever in there when there were police problems or police being paid off? Or? Uh, later, after the business really got big, uh, yeah, police uh, used to come once a month to get paid. Uh, How much were you guys making a day out of That place, uh, a uh, hundred thousand a day or more because uh, a lot of people don't realize the drug business fluctuates at certain times uh, you, you know I can't say exactly how much it made every single day at some time it made more than others but when you're selling uh, penny caps which is dollar caps quarters halves and eighths and plus Eddie sold weight too you know different parts of the city you know would meet somebody selling oh, them Oh, way more than that. It, 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 that might have sold uh, $100,000 worth a day or $50,000 worth a day, you know. It, it fluctuates, but uh, it was always up in the money. It was a lot more than $10,000, dollars or $30,000. What about, um, what about uh, buying the sphere of robbery? Like, what was the security precautions, or was it not really? At that point in Detroit, was it still, it wasn't so we didn't have security problems at the joint because only one person, you couldn't come in three people and only one person buying. And as I said, the customer gave me the money. I took it upstairs, put the money in a hole in the door. The, the amount that they bought, they dropped and I let them out. That doesn't leave room for a robbery on that part. Uh, at the back in the shooting gallery where it was, uh, uh, you had people in there 
injecting heroin themselves, it might have been a chance for a robbery there. But to my knowledge, I don't think we had any robberies there. Not that I remember. What, um, if any, what were your feelings? I mean, did you ever have remorse or feel bad? Like, you know, your wife, in that time, a lot of people getting addicted to heroin and all that, or you just felt like that's their choice? Well, uh, people have always gotten high, whether people drank, uh, and uh, alcoholism or drinking was something that I saw. It, to me, it was just a new form of getting high. Uh, and, and the stress when I was in service of, of people getting high, I didn't look at it that unusual. It was only later that you see people uh, uh, with the swollen arms and swollen legs where you could see it was a health issue also. Uh, that made me had some thought. But uh, at the time, I, I didn't think anything of it because people have always drank, uh, you know, uh, people smoke uh, marijuana and so forth. And uh, I didn't think it was that bigger thing, you know. <laughs>